Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Compline. I hope you've been enjoying this weekend and a touch of spring. Maybe Wyrton Willie was right in his predictions. So, welcome. Let's just take a moment before we begin just to quiet our hearts, recognizing that wherever we are, our Lord is present with us by His Spirit. Let's begin. I hope you have your order of service with you. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our psalm tonight is taken from the longest psalm of all, Psalm 119. The first eight verses. We'll say it responsibly by the verse. Happy are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the, in the law of the Lord. Happy are they who observe his decrees and seek him with all their hearts who never do any wrong, but always walk in his ways. You laid down your commandments that we should be fully keep them. Oh, that my ways were made so direct that I might keep your statutes. Then I should not be put to shame when I regard all your commandments. I will thank you with an unfeigned heart when I have learned your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our reading tonight is from the book of Deuteronomy, from Moses, and he writes, See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God and walking in his ways and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursing, curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to our, your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Here ends the lesson. Thanks be to God. Well, you couldn't have it said more tersely. As the people of Israel are about to enter the Promised Land, Moses assembles them in a very terse, concise fashion sets out the choice that they will face all their lives, that we face in our lives. The choice is between life and prosperity or death and adversity. Now, you would think of a choice like that, it'd be simple to make. But why is it so hard to make the right choice? It has been said that the essence of evil is that evil is irrational. If you rely upon reason, then evil choices, wrong choices, sinful choices don't make sense. The essence of temptation appears to be not reason, but appetite. Temptations come to us through our appetites. The powers of darkness will never give us ten excellent reasons why we should do that wrong thing, or say that wrong thing, or think that wrong thought. No. Evil 
temptation comes to us through our appetites. God-given appetites, of course, but appetites that can be so easily warped. Appetites for food, for acceptance, for love, for power. Right appetites, but warped. That is where the essence of sin is found. And so, there's, so evil is irrational. Nobody would choose reasonably death and adversity. But Moses says, this is the choice you have. That all through your lives, beware of the temptations that will seek to make you act in irrational ways. In our life in the province of Ontario, the last 48 hours have seen the result of irrational actions by leaders. We Christians, as we come to the words of Moses, are so thankful that God in his mercy through the spirit of the risen Christ has given us help to make the right choices, has given us the help to say no to appetites warped, the temptations that come to us through our appetites. The Apostle John, late in his life, having seen it all, said, realize that greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. Through the glory of our baptisms, the Spirit is within us. And thanks be to, to God that because the Spirit is within us, we can say no to the irrational temptations that come so that as Paul, go, or sorry, as Moses goes on later, says, choose life. Choose life, not death. Blessings, not curses. I forget who said it, but one great writer once wrote, we have to realize that every moment, every square inch, is constantly being claimed and counterclaimed by the powers of darkness and the powers of good. I often think of that moment in Martin Luther's life when he said that when he's tempted, he says, I will not do this thing for I am a baptized Christian. Thanks be to God for the spirit that is within us. May we always, through the Spirit's help, choose life, choose blessing. Amen. Join me, please, in the responsory. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, thou God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Join me in this wonderful ancient hymn. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the world. Amen. Keep us as the apple of an eye. Hide us under the shadow of thy wings. Preserve us, O Lord, waking and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Preserve us, O Lord, waking and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Join me now as the day comes to an end. Join me as we say together the Apostles' Creed, the creed of our baptism. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Blessed art thou, Lord God of our fathers, to be praised and glorified above all forever. Let us bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us praise him and magnify him forever. Blessed art thou, O Lord, in the firmament of heaven, to be praised and glorified above all forever. The Almighty and most merciful Lord, guard us and give us his blessing. Amen. So we come to the end of this day. And we look back on the day and realize there have been times where we have indeed done, said, and thought that which was not right. So how good it is to come to the end of the day and come to our Father and find perfect peace and forgiveness. So join me as we confess our sins. We confess to God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed through our own grievous fault. Wherefore, we pray God to have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins and deliver us from all evil. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wilt thou not turn again and quicken us, that thy people may rejoice in thee? O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this night without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. Now the collect of the day. This, the sixth Sunday after Epiphany, Sexagesima Sunday in the tradition of the church. O God, whose blessed Son was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us the children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant us, we beseech thee, that having this hope, we may purify ourselves even as he is pure, that when he shall appear again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where with thee, O Father, and thee, O Holy Ghost, who liveth and reigneth ever one God, world without end. Amen. And let us pray for all those who are suffering from the horrors of war, from the horrors of natural disaster, for refugees, for all who suffer. O God of love, we pray for peace, and especially for the people of Ukraine, Iran, and Afghanistan, but also for all who are frail and elderly, for those women and children who are left alone, for grieving families with loved ones who have fallen, and for the multitudes who have lost everything in Turkey and Syria. O God of peace, 
May the machines of war be transformed into implements of peace. Guide the leaders of this world that their decisions will be keenly oriented towards a just and lasting peace. O oh God of compassion, open our hearts to care for the refugees who may come to our shores and the needy stranger already in our midst. We ask all of this for Christ's sake. Amen. And I know that on many of our hearts and minds, there are those we know who need God's healing grace. Let us pray for them. Almighty God, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, went about doing good and healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people, continue, we beseech thee, this his gracious work among us, especially in the lives of those who weigh heavily on our hearts. And I invite you now to name them before the Lord, either silently or aloud. Cheer, heal, and sanctify the sick. Grant to the physicians and surgeons and nurses wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience, and send down thy blessing upon all who labor to prevent suffering and to forward thy purposes of love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There are many who are still suffering with COVID and now with RSV and influenza. Let us continue to remember them in prayer. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid, or in isolation. In their loneliness be their consolation. In their anxiety be their hope. In their darkness be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Loving Father, who art afflicted in the afflictions of thy people, regard with thy tender mercy all those in anxiety and distress. Bear their sorrows and their cares. Supply all their manifold needs and help both them and us to put our whole trust and confidence in thee. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now be with us in our homes, O Lord, and let your holy angels dwell therein to preserve us in peace. And let your blessing rest ever upon us, O thou Lord of love, who lives forever and ever. Amen. We will lay us down in peace and take our rest. For it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Thank you for joining me this night as we come to the last week before Lent. May tonight and all through this week, may you be very aware of the presence of our Lord by his spirit in your lives. Thank you, God bless you, and good night.